Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Little Modular. Today we will look at this deceptively simple module by Northcote Synthesis out of Canada, dual octave switch, codenamed MSK008. As the name implies, it's a dual octave switcher, and as such, it might look like nothing special on a surface. But like it happens in the modular world, sometimes things that look really simple can be quite flexible and quite complex. And that is the case with octave switch, which can be patched in many, many different ways. So in its simplest form, it is a dual octave switcher. But when you patch it internally, this can serve you as a wave shaper, as a dual Schmidt triggers unit. It could also be a mid-side matrix and it can also combine and subtract melodies uh, that you input in here. Many, many different functions. I won't be able to show you all of them, but I will try to uh, show some of my favorite ones and uh, one of the most useful. So let's just take uh, a peek at the interface. I will show you around and uh, as usual then we will proceed to some uh, patches. From top we have two channels of uh, octave switching, two channels of voltage processing really and those channels are almost identical with one slight difference at the uh, CV2 input which I will talk in a second. Let's start from the top. Both channels have the switch. Plus one, neutral and minus one. These serve you for switching the octaves. And I have to say that those switches are really, really tough. If you like to, you can hang yourself with those. And the whole module is built like a tank. That's uh, with all of the North Coast Synthesis modules. They are really well built. It's all through hole design so no shortcuts being made here. Below we have three inputs, the first one being the quantized input, then we have CV1 and CV2 inputs and as you can see on the uh, interface there is this graphic suggesting that both of these are normalized and that precisely is the case. Whatever you input here appears here and whatever you input on the left channel here, it will also appear here. Uh, and below you have outputs of both channels. So the only difference is here, CV2 input for both channels. The default setting is that this channel adds and this channel subtracts. So it's opposite of this channel. You can change this behavior at the back of the channel while building this module or you can construct your own expansion unit for switching this. Basically it is optional, you can change the setting. I have this factory built so I have the standard positive and negative on the left and right side of the module. The most basic use of that would be without patching anything, just the output, just like I have it so here. I have this connected to Rubicon oscillator. Now uh, if I flick it up, I'll just get a straight offset. Octave up, octave down. But we have two channels, so we can control them simultaneously. So I'll change the uh, one volt per octave on Rubicon to the first channel and I apply output of this channel to one volt per octave on my DPO oscillator. Now we can control we can control both of the oscillators but as those inputs are normalized 
you can control both of the channels with just one signal. For example, if I plug in an offset right here to the uh, CV1 on the left channel, I can control both of the oscillators as you can hear. But CV2 input is different, positive and negative. So if I apply the offset here, you can hear that one of the oscillators is going up and the second one is going down. I can of course change this behavior with this nifty polarity switch on mix switch. So we could do that the opposite way. That's very convenient. Okay? And of course we can still switch the octaves while applying the uh, offset. So that is very useful. Now the next more advanced use would be to switch those signals automatically. That what you use the quantize input for. It allows you to switch this automatically and uh, while doing so you have two octaves range here so it's wise to connect that LFO or that CV through attenuator so we have a control over depth of the modulation effectively over what range you want to switch it by. So as you can hear so now we can control the amount of transposition through this attenuator. But we are not limited only to octaves, we can switch by different intervals. The only thing you need to have is an oscillator that has an uh, exponential FM built in, like Rubicon. So instead of connecting output of this um, to volt per octave, you would connect it to the uh, exponential FM in. So if we do that right now, okay, and if you have the exponential FM knob set maximum clockwise to the right, and if we engage it on a mixer, I will switch it with octaves again, same thing. But when you decrease the knob of exponential FM, you will get different intervals and of course you might want to use that not only with one volt per octave input but you also can use that for example for precise filter cutoff jumps or any kind of different you know CV destination uh, that's very very useful for that kind of purpose. We can also use that to transpose one melody by other melody like I did at the beginning of the video uh, and that's where all those normalizations arrangements come in handy. So for instance now if I repeat that so what I'll do is I take the pitch signal from Metropolis and I stick it in here one volt per octave going out of the left channel that's how it sounds. Now I also have a second melody coming out of my eloquencer and if I connect it here you can hear those two melodies are interacting. Of course I can still switch the octaves but now I can make a different arrangements because these are normalized, remember. So I can now connect it here, get a different melody. I can connect it here and invert it. Of course, nothing stops you from using the other inputs, like the quantized input for switching octaves by an LFO. And you can get some funky switching and more complex melodies. As I said before, this also works perfectly with audio because it's a very pure electronic path. There are no microcontrollers inside. It's all extremely fast 
so it works perfectly with audio signals. You can use it for, for MS uh, matrix. You can use it as a simple wave shaper, for example. Let's see what will happen when I uh, connect a simple sine wave. That's how it sounds on its own. That is a simple sine wave out of Rubicon, just like before. Now, what is going to happen when I route it through the module? You take out of the second channel, put it into quantizer in, then you take the uh, mm, sine wave, stick it into either of the inputs, and uh, take the molted output to your mixer. And that's how that would sound like. That's the same sine wave. Of course, it will sound differently if you change the uh, waves. This could also serve as a dual Schmidt triggers. Now what a Schmidt trigger is, this allows you to extract mm, trigger signals out of complex or not so complex CV signals. It's a similar patch to this one, so you also take output from the out and stick it to the quantizer in, but then you stick two CV sources to both of these so it takes those two inputs, it compares them, and whenever some of them goes above two and a half volts, it puts the module into the uh, high state. And whenever some of that inputs is lower than minus two and a half volts, it puts that in the uh, low state. So it's very useful, for example, if you're using that with the uh, modules like envelope follower and you uh, use that with the uh, signal extracted from some dynamic sources like guitar or vocal. So uh, that's very useful. But in my case, I'm going to use signal out of mm, sample and hold, which I have here. That's a Pico R&D sample and hold right there. And you can see it's already blinking green and, uh, and red. And the second source is going to be our trusty Batumi LFO, which we'll stick in here. And again, you get your trigger out of the output, out of the malted output. I have connected this to a VCA, which has one of the oscillators put through it, and that's how it sounds. And now when you fiddle with the LFO shape and speed, and of course, also speed and shape of uh, the second signal, in my case the sample and hold, you will get different results. Kind of like a random trigger generator, semi-random, because it depends on, on the input. So this could be really useful also. Uh, so as you can see already, um, I have presented you just with few examples of uh, how this module can be used, but uh, there are dozens of scenarios and I strongly recommend you to uh, take a closer look at it and devote some time to uh, this module and do not discard it just because it's a simple octave switcher. It is, but it could be so much more. It's built like a tank, very flexible, very useful in every system. Definitely check it out. Thank you very much for watching and as usual if you like that video subscribe and spread the good word. Thank you very much till the next time. Bye bye.